you know, this is an important piece to me because it's one of those pictures that um, uh, is, um, this has wheels on it, okay. <laughs> uh, uh, that it was one of those pictures that was, it has no color to it, which is what I liked about it. It wasn't like a big, vibrant color picture. It was something that had just a little bit of color to it, which is what initially turned me on about it. And then this is another color photograph that I did with early in that time. It was, um, you know, I realized that there was something about, there was an artificiality to color photography that I liked. Like things kind of didn't look quite real or they kind of looked like a model or something like that. So that was uh, something that kind of attracted me to it. Um, and then when I was in school, I started to like, I was doing these kind of sequences of pictures and I would put together like, you know, old found snapshots and, and pictures of rooms and pictures of places. And I needed some establishing shots for these kind of little narratives that I was creating. So I started to kind of go out and, and look for these places that could become these containers for this, um, these narratives that I was making. And, uh, and so that's when I started first doing the houses at night in color. And so I just kind of went out and I made this picture and um, it was something that I was excited about. I really liked it. It kind of felt like one of those, like if you watch, you know, like on TV, the sitcoms, like, you know, when they come back from the commercial, they flash on that house at night and then they go into the thing. And they almost do it for almost everyone, you know. And it's really interesting to, to, to watch that. Um, think of me next time you've seen those. Uh, that's kind of what I was after. But, um, but, but not in that way, you know. I was sort of, you know, I was finding something that was a little bit darker and a little bit more kind of mysterious and noirish. Um, and so I just started to kind of make these pictures. And they just kind of happened slowly but surely. They weren't, there was never really any kind of like aha uh -uh moment until kind of a little bit. I found this neighborhood. I was living in California and the architecture is quite different out there. And I wanted to find these places that sort of like reminded me of the Midwest, you know. And when I, I found this neighborhood that was, a, was one of the original Levittown neighborhoods that was in California, um, and, uh, and, and I went and, and I shot these pictures in these places. So these are, you know, this is like a house that we could have around here, and like we do have around here. And so when I started seeing these, I was immediately kind of would, would think of home, and I would think of, you know, Ohio and, and, and all that. It's kind of strange talking in Ohio because like you guys know all this stuff, but it's funny that yeah. it's usually I'm somewhere else and they're like, oh, Ohio, how exotic. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, Um, 
And uh, it's just kind of, and here I'll show you guys now. It's kind of interesting. Um, and so I would just go out and drive around and just look for these things. And then one thing that I should say is that it, it's, um, none of these are staged at all. Like everything is 100% found. Um, I don't really, um, I don't, nothing is lit. You know, I don't use any lighting. I don't use an assistant. I don't, I just go out and drive around and shoot. Um, because that's what I'm interested in. Uh, this is one of the only ones with the lights out. And then I would shoot these other clips, you know, like whatever I find, I'd shoot. And I just started to get kind of like, I really started to learn how to do this and get good at, you know, figuring out what the exposure would be or, you know, I'd find things that I would, you know, this was off the freeway and I remember like trying to find how to get back to that spot because um, I knew there was a good picture there. Um, and so I just kept doing it and kept adding to it. Um, and then here's a photograph that uh, was the cover, is the cover of my first book, House Hunting. Um, and then here is the contact sheet. I think it's interesting to see how these things occur, that, you know, uh, is that like on the bottom left is like where it starts, and I'm kind of outside photographing this house, and I'm kind of far away because I, you know, I'm not sure if it's safe to be there or if people are noticing me or not. And I just kind of, and after being there, and these are, I should say, these are also six to 10 minute long exposures. And so it's generally, um, you know, after being somewhere for 10 or 15 minutes, you get a sense of whether it's okay to move close, you know. So I would move a little bit closer and then a little bit closer and then ultimately found my exposure. But, you know, usually I don't shoot that many pictures. I usually shoot, um, you know, like three, four frames of something like this <laughs> on this kind of thing, because it takes so long to do it. Um, and then there's the book cover. So it's also interesting that this is, you know, I remember this picture specifically, like I've driven around for like five hours that night looking for stuff to shoot, and I'm very, very particular about what I'll spend my time photographing, and because uh, I don't have a lot of time to spend um, doing things that aren't going to work. So, but I remember finding, I turned this one corner, and then wow, all of a sudden, you know, it's like there's this perfect place. You never know what you're going to find, and there's always something out there. Um, and, you know, it's just, that's what keeps you looking. And then in terms of like, you know, color, Things like that and, and that kind of quality. These are like, you know, here's a here's a picture that's um, printed this way and then printed this way. You know, so in the, you know, and this isn't Photoshop, this is like, you know, my hands and dials in the dark room. But uh, anyway, everything I do is still at this point analog, like 100 percent from you know the film, I shoot film, I go to the dark room and print on, you know, put it on a chemistry machine and process it. Um, and I'll keep doing that until they stop making the stuff, you know, entirely. Um, but uh, when I do this, I'm, um, you know, I kind of like, I feel like, like my approach to taking pictures is I'm very much, I, I, I shoot like a documentarian, but I print like a painter, you know. Like I don't mess around with stuff when I'm shooting. I just shoot what I find, and I don't really intervene. But when I'm in the dark room printing, I, I have like full license to do any manipulation or any kind of, coloring or, or changing things around when I do. So this is a typical kind of example of that. Um, and then this is how I've shown the work often. Like like when I um, when I first started, you know, I, I've shown my work in large sizes, but I've also shown the work in these, in these smaller 20 by 24 prints, which I really love this kind of aspect of this, you know, expanded grid um, and being able to shoot like this. This is from a show in, in, in the UK. Um, but uh, so these are all 20 by 24 pieces. And then, you know, here's just a few more of these. So just kind of, you know, you keep learning things. Like I knew that snow was going to be good with uh, nighttime shooting. So I um, remember flying back here specifically to go and shoot uh, some of these snowy pictures. This one's just down in, in Stowe. This is Pittsburgh. It's funny to see these. Like this is, this is this. I love this. I really love this picture. But this is some a student sent this thing to me. He's like, I saw that house you shot. <laughs> <laughs> but it's funny to see the real thing. You know, like uh, and that's my interpretation, and then that's what it really looks like. You know? 